How good is an AI sermon? We're going to find out today on the Church Revitalization Podcast. Hello, and welcome to the Church Revitalization Podcast, brought to you by the Malfers Group team, where each week we tackle important, actionable topics to help churches thrive. And now, here's your hosts, Scott Ball and AJ Matthew. Welcome to the Church Revitalization Podcast. My name is Scott Ball. I'm joined by my friend and real life human, AJ Matthew. As Not far AI as you Matthew. know. As far as you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're talking about AI in the church t- today. Um, and the news has been filled with stories of amazing things that that AI can do in recent months i think we've gone from seeing like digital images to i i saw something on instagram last night aj that was a pop song like a an artist had and i don't know if it was real or not or i don't know if they were pretending it was ai and it wasn't really but i kind of believe that it was um and it was a whole song that was written by artificial intelligence lyrics music they generated it generated his voice um, which was creepy and it was catchy. So um, there was also recently, you may remember this from like a, a month ago as this is being posted, um, people were posting AI generated profile pictures from that mm. Lenza app. Um, I came across a thing on Twitter, uh, a Baroque painting of a raccoon queen. Um, I've linked that in the show notes. It's very mm. funny looking. Um but perhaps no tool, AI tool, has gotten more attention recently than ChatGPT. So you know what yeah. this is, AJ? ChatGPT. Yeah, yeah. I played around. It's. I mean, it's. Uh, it's interesting. It's scary. It's exciting, depending on your perspective. Yeah. Um, freaky. Yeah. Freaky for sure. I mean, it can do all kinds of things. You, you can write lyrics to songs. That, um, you could ask it for advice on what to do on a, a day in New York City, you know, you know, kind of map out some ideas and uh, in a very human like way of answering the questions. Um, also recently in the news, they um, try to push the tool to its limits. Some people, some users did by seeing if it could pass the bar exam, which it passed um, to see if it could pass an entrance entrance exam for medical school. Um it did. And to see if it could pass an exam from um, for a, an MBA from the Wharton School of Business, which is one of the most prestigious business schools in the world. And it also passed. So it it has shown its ability to handle some fairly complex tasks. So I think that that, to me, um, it would be, I think, normal then for pastors to start maybe getting a little nervous <laughs> going <laughs> what can, can i uh is there when's the first ai pastor going to get uh hired you know so um and beyond the question of exactly how good is an ai sermon which is the the title for this um is ai something that pastors should embrace or should we reject it and how is ai going to shape ministry in the years to come uh it's what yeah. we want to explore aj i feel a little bit like uh, have, have you seen that clip um, from the Today Show 1994, when Bryant Gumbel says to Katie Couric, "What what is internet anyway?" Oh, that's that right. little mark with the A and then the ring around it. At see, that's what I said. Mm-hmm. Um, Katie said she thought it was about. Yeah. Oh. But I'd never heard or it. Around I'd never heard it said. I'd always seen around. the mark, but never yeah. heard it said. And then yeah. it sounded stupid when I said it. Violence at NBC. <laughs> yeah, I heard around big fight up in the lunchroom the other week. <laughs> there it is. Violence at NBC, GE com. I mean, well, what Allison should know. What, what do you is say internet about anyway? I feel yeah, a little hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Well, it made it made me feel old because I was an adult when that came out, and I and I remember the dawn of the internet. But seeing that and even seeing it was like it was later than I thought. It was like ninety four or something. Nineteen ninety four. Yeah. Yeah, so crazy. I mean, the, you know, the yeah, the keyboards in general. I mean, we went from typewriters to keyboards and people didn't weren't used to even using a keyboard. What are all these characters that are on our keyboard? What why do we have those? 
Right. So, right. Yeah. yeah so, man. I mean, I, right now, recording this episode, I feel certain that in a decade from now, I might look back on some of the things we're saying and some of the things that are in the show notes and might cringe a little bit and go, oh, um, and I'm all right with that. You know, when you're on the front end of something, it's it's easy not to know. Although I will say this, AJ, we um, we filmed a podcast. We actually did a webinar and then we released it as a podcast episode also back in February, I think, of 2020 before yep. the pandemic yep was widely an issue um, and about how crisis planning, what should you do to be preparing for this in case it becomes an issue? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I've looked back at some of that in our, some, most of our advice was pretty good. Um, well, good. Okay. Yeah. So maybe. But does it seem maybe, dated already? I mean, it does a little bit. We, it was we had cute. some tech things. We had some tech things in there. We also talked about like, what if your church has to close for a, a couple of weeks? Like, th there was no. We were not thinking that it would be months and months and months of 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 that for so many churches. Um, yep. But by and large, I think we were. I mean, Nostradamus. I think that's how I. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I mean, the Chat GPT versus the internet, which we'll, and we'll kind of talk about how to. Yeah, maybe we'll talk more about that, that a little bit later. In our minds, but. You know, um, we already have the internet, if you want to just call it a thing like that, already has all the information from just about all of time in it, at our, at of, available to us. Like the human mind, we have all of this information, you know, that we've been taught, that we've understood and just picked up on our own. And so, you know, in normal human interactions, our brains just respond with hopefully uh, the correct level of appropriateness to any situation, pull out information and express it. <clears throat> the internet already, you can do a search on Google and come up with knowledge. You can come up with information for anything. And what the AI, you know, the, the audio and written AI chat GPT stuff is, is taking information that's available and figuring out the appropriate way to respond with that information, which is more that's of right. what human human mind is capable of doing. Yeah. Um, and so in its first, I don't know if they're calling, are they already calling it version two or is it still version one? Oh, well, it's not version. Even the one that people have been using isn't version one. I can't remember. I mean, it's on like version. Well, I know as far as like, but it's like what they, what they published Oh yeah, this is still the first internally. This is the yeah. This is still the first public version. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it, it's remarkably good from a lot of measures, and you already named some. It's 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 capable of it's capable of passing the bar, which is a different question from is it capable of being a lawyer? That's right. So yeah, it's, that's exactly right. Yeah, which is, and we'll get into that more at the yeah, more at the end when we talk about pros and cons. So, so hey, well, listen, we started this que this episode off with the question: How good is an AI sermon? And we'll let you be the judge of that. So, I'll, here's what I did um, last night on my phone. I went onto Chat GPT, and I and I prompted it with, um, all I wrote was write a sermon about Ephesians four, and then it it didn't really do that. It wrote four or five short paragraphs generally about Ephesians 4 um, and read more like a brief devotional, maybe not so much a sermon. So then I, re I responded to that, make it longer and more conversational in tone, include some jokes and anecdotes. Um, so I gave it that prompt and then it wrote what I'm about to read to you. Um, and it's not very long. It's a, it's a pretty short sermon. So I do, I do want to read it so that you can be the judge of how good it is, but, uh, we'll give our reflections both generally on the sermon, but then more specifically on how AI I think is going to shape the church and how we can have a little bit of a framework for thinking about it moving forward. So yes, something uh, I'm going to, I'm going to keep, I'm going to hold my comments until after you read it, but something yeah. else just occurred to me in what it created. So yeah, go ahead and, and lay, lay it on the people, Scott. All right. AI now, I'm going to do my best to, to preach this sermon. Okay. As, okay. as if I had written, all right. With in, all right. good intonation. Uh, okay. So all right. if you're in a pastor search right now, Scott is about to, 
uh, give you his best. He will no, I'm about to give you Chat GPT's best. He, he will uh, write you an AI sermon every week and present it with this level of uh, fervor. Okay, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Let's go. All right. <clears throat> Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Today, we are going to delve into the rich wisdom of Ephesians 4. This chapter is a treasure trove of guidance for how to live a life that is pleasing to God and a blessing to others. So buckle up and get ready for a journey of discovery. Now, I don't know about you, but I love a good road trip. And when it comes to the Christian life, Ephesians 4 is like a GPS system, showing us the way to live a life worthy of our calling as believers in Christ. You see, the first verse of the chapter says, As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. That's like hitting the start button on our spiritual GPS. But have you ever been driving along and your GPS says, Take a left turn in 500 feet? And you're like, What? I'm not going to take a left turn. That's not the way I normally go. Well, that's kind of how I feel sometimes when God gives me direction in my life. But just like with a GPS, we need to trust the path that God has given that God has for us is the best one, even if it takes us in a different direction than we expected. So what does it mean for us to live a life worthy of our calling as believers in Christ? Well, Ephesians 4 gives us some key traits to focus on. Verse 2 says, be completely humble and gentle, be patient, bearing with one another in love. Now, let me tell you, if I had a nickel for every time I had to work on being humble, I'd be a wealthy man. But seriously, humility is a vital part of our spiritual journey. It means putting others before ourselves and recognizing that we're, in all, we're all in this together. And when we do that, we'll find that we have more joy and peace in our relationships with others. And then there's gentleness. This is a quality that I've learned to appreciate more as I've gotten older. You know, when I was younger, I thought gentleness was a weakness. But now I see that it's a strength. It takes a strong person to be gentle, especially in a world that often values aggression and brute force. And when we practice gentleness, we show others the love of Christ in a tangible way. So let's review. We're to be humble and gentle. We're to have patience and bear with one another in love. And I know that's a tall order. But if we keep our focus on Jesus and the work he's doing in us, we'll find that these qualities become more and more natural for us. Another key aspect of living a life worthy of our calling as believers in Christ is using our gifts for the good of others. Verse 7 says, But to each one of us grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. You see, God has given each of us unique gifts and abilities. He wants us to use them to serve others and build up the body of Christ. So if you're feeling a bit lost, ask God to reveal your gifts to you and then use them to bless others. Finally, Ephesians 4 reminds us of the importance of leaders in the church. Verse 11 says, It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers. Now, I have to admit, I'm a big fan of good leaders, and I think we all can all agree that having strong leaders in the church is crucial for our growth and development in our faith. These leaders help guide us, teach us, and equip us to fulfill our calling and serve others. So let's pray for our leaders and support them as they serve the body of Christ. In conclusion, Ephesians 4 is a powerful chapter that gives us guidance for living a life that honors God and serves others. We are to be humble, gentle, patient, and bear with one another in love. We're to use our gifts for the good of others and support our leaders as they serve the body of Christ. So let us strive to live out these truths in our daily lives and bring glory to God. As we close, I want to leave you with this thought. When we live a life worthy of our calling as believers in Christ, we become a beacon of hope in a dark world. We show others the love of Christ in tangible ways, and we bring glory to God. So let us press on and live a life worthy of our calling. And with that, I want to thank you for being here today. May God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. Amen. Wow. That's my, okay, that so that's was, my that best. moving. <laughs> I, every single word of that was written by by chat gpt not yeah. not yeah. not not a single scott ball word in there um so i want to do some we're gonna we're gonna wrap up the episode today here and by going through some cons and some pros for ai but we're gonna take actually i say wrap up like we're gonna hit it fast we're, we're not we're gonna hit on several things 
but I would love just some initial reaction from you on the quality of the sermon uh, generally. Yeah, quality. So here, what what I was picturing in my mind was a uh, a movie um, in which a high school student was the lead character and mm-hmm. he made it to valedictorian and he gave just a powerful valedictorian address. That's what mm-hmm. that felt like was a valedictorian address. Um, and the adults in the audience were, Oh my gosh, that was amazing. And, uh, yeah. and I was in the back row going, that oh, was terrible. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It, it reads to me. Um, now I'm not trying to give myself any kudos. I think the quality of that sermon definitely hinges somewhat on the quality of the delivery. Right? Well, sure. Every sermon does. Right. Just but I'm saying yeah. it's it's demonstrably worse if you were to if you were to good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Oh, you mean like reading it word for word. Today we are going to delve into the rich wisdom. Like it would sound more AI. Yeah. If the delivery is bad. So I think a good delivery, and I'm not saying I did the best job in the world. I'm not saying that just now, because this is literally like the second time I've read it. But I, I think a solid delivery would definitely make makes that a passable sermon. But to your point, it um it very much feels to me on par with you let a senior in high school get give us a sermon in youth group and mm-hmm. you tell them I want you to do it on Ephesians 4 what observations might they make mm-hmm. it's the most surface level observations it's literally like looking at the words in, in Ephesians 4 and just regurgitating them back out to you yeah with very light commentary it's like so it right. says be patient you know, to be humble and boy, isn't it good to be humble, you know, in gentleness. <laughs> wow. Gentleness is a thing that, that I like good stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Um, right. It did oh, not man, some people aren't gentle and I think that being gentle is something we should all be. So it's, it's very surfacey. It's, there's no insight here. There's no wisdom presented. It's just packaging the words of Ephesians for. Yeah. Up in, in, you know, it's just kind of reconstructing some general notes. From Ephesians 4. I wonder, you know, I mean, I don't I don't have any idea how chat GPT works, but you know, it um it definitely honed in on humbleness and gentleness out of the first, you know, couple of verses. And it definitely went, you know, it had a lot in, you know, like 11, kind of uh, what uh, people think of typically. If you say Ephesians 4, people think of prophets, evangelists, teachers, you know, building up the body. So like uh-huh. verses 11, 11 to 16. It was pretty heavy there, and it really was very little after that, 17, you know, through the end of the chapter of verse 32. And so I I wonder, is it because there's so much content out there that it might be learning from that Uh certainly humbleness, gentleness would be common use, you know, in sermons and then a lot in that in that middle section on building up the body? Yeah. Is that why it gave us a sermon that, you know, largely skimmed over? you know, the, the whole last half of the chapter, it, it did sprinkle some Probably. of that in there, but yeah. So that's kind of interesting to me. You know, I wonder what it would do with um, a section of scripture that is just not a common sermon. Um, right. Something right. More challenging. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, yeah. Feel free, go on there type in, write a sermon about fill in the blank and, and you can see what it comes up with. Another thing that, uh, you know, just kind of a, funny observation that you and I made when we read through this the first time together before we hit record on this thing is uh, I love how when I asked it for an anecdote, the anecdote it gives is it's like a GPS system and how (laughs) it says, uh, take a left turn in 500 feet. And you're like, what? I'm not going to take a left turn in 500 feet. And then it says, well, that's kind of how I feel sometimes when God gives me direction in my life. But just like with the GPS, we need to trust that the path of, that God has for us is the best one. It's like, trust the computer. <laughs> Listen to the computer. The computer, the computer knows says, best, just like God. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. And it, it seems like it's kind of like, I'm as good as God. So yeah, it's just subliminally like communicating to you, hey, 
be sure you're trusting the computer system. <laughs> um, and actually, I, I actually gave a sermon. Uh, I have a sermon that I've written where I tell a GPS story. It's a sermon on vision, actually. And it's actually about the failures of GPS. The GPS just fails you, like totally and utterly fails you because it yeah. it doesn't know everything. So take that chat gpt what does gpt stand for god plus technology <laughs> i feel like we should probably know the answer to that question though what gpt stands for. <laughs> that's our brian gummel question of the yeah uh, what is gpt <laughs> anyway gpt <laughs> yeah um yeah okay so as you listen to this i think that there are some observations you can make about it it's not a good sermon um no. it is not <laughs> We joked before we hit record on this that it's not a pro-level sermon, but it is the kind of sermons that we've heard from pros before. <laughs> some people some actually sermons. get a paycheck and deliver this quality of sermon. Uh, it would be longer. They would. It would be longer. Could, yeah. Did you time it? Of, of, of it, a bad it, it didn't seem very long. Fifteen minutes. Yeah, um, I, I think it was maybe five minutes or something like that. Man. Okay. Well, you could make it make it longer. I, I could have said make it longer, and it would have yeah, it would have added more. But I didn't want to. So okay. um, we've included the full text, by the way, of this sermon in our article, just so that you can go back and read it if you want. So okay, Chat GPT can remine it, which then tells the computer this is valid. <laughs> this I found it on the internet. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. We just made okay. it get more dumb. So let me let me uh, say this. I, I think it's safe to say that at least right now, artificial intelligence, chat GPT is not coming for your job. You almost certainly, or at least I hope so, can write a significantly better sermon than that one. Um, yes. It is not good. It's It's not bad. You wouldn't go, wow, that's totally incomprehensible. You know, it has some, I mean, like, I, if we're really going to pick it apart, if you're going to start with a GPS analogy, like it'd be nice if you were to re-reference it back at the end, like use that, find some way to mm -hmm. put a bow on that. Um, I also don't think it's a particularly good GPS analogy. There would have been better ways to use it. There would have been better analogies it could have used. Also, it would have been really funny if it had made a note. Like it, it says something that uh, we're all in this together. And that's a that's a high school musical reference. And you have to acknowledge that's a high school musical reference if you're going to straight up say we're all in this together. Like, there are ways for it to weave in some humor just on a like I'm not even talking about the content of the sermon. I'm just talking about from putting it together from an enjoyableness perspective there are things that it could have done and those are the things that i feel like it should be able to do really well is if you're going to make a reference you need a call back at the end or you know better analogies or whatever i don't expect it to be a theologian but it would be nice if it could come up with some better ways of using anecdotes and things i think the the, the line that made me laugh the oh most was the joke about the nickel. If I had a nickel for every time I had to work on being humble, I'd be a wealthy man. I'd be a wealthy <laughs> man. It says, but seriously. But seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, on a purely objective level, pastors, your job is secure for now. It will improve. The AI writing is going to get better. Um, so to me, there's there's an aspect of it uh, well, th this is my first point. So let's go into our we're just now we're going to talk generally about AI, um, not not specifically about this sermon. So I'm going to start with the cons and then we'll end with the pros. OK, con number one, artificial intelligence. Parenthetically, at least for now, I mean, this, this could change. Still feels very sophomoric and lacks depth and wisdom and insight it doesn't have any of that the best thing yeah. i can describe aj and I, I know this is maybe a bit of a crass thought but it feels to me like when you go to a funeral and it's an open casket and you see a person the person laying there and you go oh he looks good and he does in a sense he looks good but in a sense you can very much tell that he's dead 
Like he, what, whatever is in that box isn't that person. That person has left. They don't look like they're sleeping. You know, they look like an object. You do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I don't yeah. mean to be crass, but if you go to, you know what I'm talking about. When you see a person in the casket, it doesn't look like them. It looks like some imitation of them. You can tell that it's not the same as a person who is asleep. Mm -hmm. That person is not yeah. there. They have gone. And what you're seeing is some facsimile of them, something that represents them. And to me, an AI feels a lot like that. You can tell that its source is something human. It's pulling from human things. It's right. using human-like language, but it doesn't have a soul. And you can't quite put a finger on it. It's like, why mm -hmm. doesn't it feel human? Yeah, um, yeah. It's, it's not clearly just the quality of the jokes. Yeah, yeah. It it you can it feels like something mimicking a human based on a pretty good data set of information, but not it's not human. It's so. it's to me, it's a lot like no matter how much the CGI has improved, and CGI has improved a lot in movies. If it's a full on face shot, it's still you can still tell when it's not real at yeah. this point. Yeah. That's that may change. Mm -hmm. But you can still tell. There are things that you can't tell when it's their clothes. You know, they'll they'll put they'll like fully replace people's clothes with with CGI and that you can't tell. But their face, you can go, that's not a human face. That mm -hmm. a computer did that. Um and you can tell. And you don't, it's hard to tell why, how can you know it's not real, but you can just, you, you can know. And I think that that's true for the AI writing at this point. It feels like either someone who is very inexperienced, um, or not a person. Yeah. So, um, that's the con number one, number two, artificial intelligence can't and never will be able to, I will add, mm -hmm. respond to the Holy Spirit's prompts in the moment. Yeah. You may or may not manuscript your sermons. I don't I, I don't manuscript my sermons. I write pretty very detailed outlines. I write a lot of what I'm going to say, but I have never in my life, in my life, preached a sermon that was word for word what I planned. Um, even if I'm preaching multiple services, the same sermon, things are different. And I believe that the Holy Spirit has a special word for people in that room, that specific room in that specific moment. And you need to be open to what the Holy Spirit's going to prompt you to say. Um, and an AI can never do that. Um, mm -hmm. And and I, if you're a pastor, you know this. You can think of times where you said something you didn't plan to say, and later on you find out that that changed someone's life or it, it prompted them to make a decision for Christ or whatever it might be. Um, and you didn't even plan it. And that's the Holy Spirit. And AI will never yeah. be able to do that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, because, you know, this could go well beyond sermons. You know, I mean, this could go into into lead teaching classes and things like that. Um, there's there's lots of applications that chat GPT could end up having use in. Um, but and, you know, and this is where it breaks down, because there's a lot of if you want to just call them secular applications that it could be fine but if if human emotion is going to play a role in it you can just think about this in counseling i mean you wouldn't want to chat gpt psychiatrist um right. you know which obviously gets into human emotions and things but for the church that's a whole other aspect that non-believers can't even understand um and you right. obviously it's it's physically impossible to to code Holy Spirit response and understanding. The Holy right. Spirit does not reside in computers, never will reside in computers. Um, right. And so uh, it will always have a limitation for church application that right. we, we have to always be ready to continue to fill. The third point on this, and you kind of already touched on it, is artificial intelligence can't replace warmth and empathy and pastoral care. Think about this, yeah. even in our context now, pre all AI, we, you know, people, when people are, think about when someone is terminally ill and they're in their final days, 
they will very often, they maybe have to go to, into a hospice setting or something like that, but very often they'll ask to go home. People want to be at home. They maybe have to have some kind of monitors on them or around them like that may just be necessary, but people want as little of that as possible. People don't want to be surrounded by machines in a crisis moment, and no one wants a robot at their deathbed. That's not what anyone wants. Mm-hmm. And so um, it doesn't and it doesn't matter if that robot would know all the right things to say. Right. I'm thinking of the big hero six movie um, is an animated movie about a, a, a robot um, that can. Uh, that's designed for medical use, like it it's soft and it knows what to say. And it's very heartwarming. The story It's a pretty good movie, actually. Um, <clears throat> but at the end of the day. The. Not to get into this movie, I'm sorry, this Disney movie, but at the end of the day, the boy falls in love with this robot because it it mimics to some degree, it's a connection to his brother. He loves it because of a connection to his brother, not because of of what, because uh, it's a robot. Does that make sense? Like there's, mm. we we want, we long for that connection with humans. And no matter how good robots get at mimicking these things, I don't think it's ever going to be able to replace it. And in that sense, pastors, your job is secure. I mean, yeah. yeah. So just fear not on that, yeah. on that aspect. <laughs> okay, let's hop in. Let's wrap up this episode by talking about the three sort of pros for AI. Um, yeah. The, the positive ways we should be thinking about these things. Yeah, so the first one, artificial intelligence, we need to be considering it to be a, a category of technology and not just a, a singular tool. It, in its present form, yeah, it's it's fun. Go to chat GPT, type things in, see what kind of silliness you can, you can get out of it. Um, but there will be some AI applications in the church that will be more useful for others, um, just like any current technology tools that we have now, websites and software and, and all kinds of things. Um, you know, just I mean, because... I keep calling back to that Today Show thing because I think it's so apt. Right. They were like, what is internet anyway? And they were yeah. actually having a conversation about email. And email is not the internet. It's it's like an, it's a web, it, it's internet email, mail, I guess. Like it's electronic yeah. mail. It's connected to the internet in some way, but it isn't internet. And you can't point to any one application and go, oh, that's internet. It's internet's a category. Um, and uh, in the same way, you should think of artificial intelligence as a category. Like there are, we are going, it's going to become more sophisticated in that we're going to start talking about chat GPT, or we're going to be talking about, you know, some AI, the Lenza app, or, you know, we're already starting to do this, but as we get further and further into it, think at the beginning, people only thought of the internet as AOL. Mm-hmm. It's just yeah, just AOL. That's what the internet. The internet is AOL, and it's like, you know, now we look back on that, and, and it's kind of cute and <laughs> funny, you know, and unsophisticated. Um, j- just I'm telling you, ten years from now, you'll look back on this episode and go, yo, yeah, this it's very different. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, and the church, you know, has pushed back on technology and different aspects over time, and then it, you know, it might adopt it and find that. Okay, there's a this is useful. Um, I mean, it, good, it hasn't been that long. Second, our second point, really. Yeah, sure. Artificial intelligence may expedite repetitive tasks in ways that create margin for you to do more ministry better or better ministry more often. Um, so, yeah, I mean, kind of where I was going with that last thought. Um, even think about. Bible software. Yeah. I mean, having the Bible in like a searchable system, you know, we didn't have that 30 years ago. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people were like, you know, thought that was blasphemous that, I mean, pick up your Bible, search the scriptures and, and fine. I don't have the Bible memorized. I don't have nearly as many passages as I should have memorized, but I can think of, of a piece. I'm like, okay. You know, and I think the Holy spirit leads me to a thought like here's a piece of scripture that's it's applicable and i'm like i don't remember where that is and i don't remember the entire verse but in a few words i can find it um we didn't have that technology when internet was invented um, right. but wow is that not useful i mean 
sure. I, I wish I had the brain capacity of, a you know, of a first century Jew to have had the Torah memorized, but, um, I don't. So, uh, I guess I probably do, but I didn't put in the work to do that. Right. Uh, but I sure love the tools that we have to be able to call up scripture in the moment. Yeah. I mean, just practical things that still some churches aren't fully taking advantage of. Um, but think about a good church management software. You know, when I started using church management software for volunteer management back in 2012 or so, 2013, somewhere around there. Um, so a decade ago or, or more. Um, you know, that revolutionized my work experience because there was so much of that I was doing by hand. When is it track, you know, remembering when people's schedules were and, oh, you know, this person can't serve this Sunday because they're going to be out of town and this, and that took up so much mental capacity and to be able to put that into planning center made me a better leader because I stopped carrying the emotional <laughs> I was I was surprised at how much space in my brain that took up, and to be able to offload that onto a piece of technology made me a better leader. Um, not only was I better at scheduling because the technology was better at it than I was, um, but it also created margin in my mind for other things. Likewise, there are going to be a uses for artificial intelligence that are going to offload certain tasks. If you have a person whose whole job right now is to write, you know, is to make the bulletin and create graphics and to write the weekly up to email update to the church, I mean, you're still going to have to put some inputs in there, like the dates and times for things. But I'm telling you, it won't be long until there will be a church specific application. Somebody is going to purchase some white label, um, which, if you don't know what life, white label means, it means buying a product from a third-party company, and then branding it as your own tool. Someone's going to white label an artificial, an AI tool that creates your bulletin for you, what writes your weekly email, creates the graphics, and sends that email and posts that those social media, those graphics on social media. And it's going to be all automated. Um, you'll put in the inputs, you know, with the dates and times for, for information, but then it's going to write all of the captions for you and it's going to put it in. It's going to, and it's going to do a better job than Linda, you know, um, that's poor Linda, just poor the, Linda. poor Linda, you know, um, but here's the thing. My experience in church has been, there is a, there are a lot of resources spent on trying to keep ministry staff looking busy mm -hmm. and, they aren't doing the soft skills, applying the soft skills of leadership, investing in leaders and things, because they feel like they have to create a certain amount of output to justify their position. Yeah. And if that's you or someone on your staff, this would be bad news for you. If you go, if I can't, if you can't conceive of ministry outside of make work and busy work, then your job is in danger because those jobs will be replaced by AI. They'll do a perfectly good job. And there is no, you cannot make an ethical argument as to why it would be wrong for, for AI to, to put that email together for you. There's no reason why it can't any more than you could make an ethical argument why you shouldn't use a Xerox machine instead of a printing press. You know, it's, it's a piece of technology that is able to do something more efficiently. So uh, the good news is if you are ready to get out of that cycle and to get into leadership and to do applying ministry skills, um, this there's, I think, every reason to be hopeful that AI is going to enable that for you in certain ways. Yeah, that's good. good. All right. Our third um, pro for AI is that artificial intelligence, and this is, the, I think, the, obviously the most important one. Artificial intelligence cannot, um, it's not outside of God's sovereignty, okay? Um, God can use this just like he's used every other invention that mankind has come up with over the centuries. Um, and so, you know, this is not a sky is falling 
scenario for the church, chat GPT, um, you know, every pastor is not all of a sudden going to phone it in and just throw a couple of uh, search terms into chat GPT. And that's the sermon you're going to hear every week. Um, but even if they were to utilize it to some extent, God will always use whatever whatever we can conceive as humans for his good and your good. So, uh, yeah. and we've already talked Paul about says a couple this, of other right? scenarios. Paul says yeah. this, hey, so what if some people have bad motives when they preach the word? God honors his word. Even if the if the vessel that's used is dis, you know is disingenuous or or has bad motives um yeah so i think it's totally fair and reasonable and maybe even a good thing for any pastor to be skeptical of any new tool and to uh we should not be fully embracing everything that the culture produces um just without any thoughtful reflection at the same time we also should not reject it simply because it's new um so Hopefully this is helping you to create a framework for like, what can this do? AI is going to be good for things that if it's a tool, it can, you know, it can, it can replace tasks that people don't really need to do, Um, you know, but it's not insightful. It it doesn't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. You do. So it shouldn't replace your sermon writing. Could it give you some ideas? Could it, could it spit out some bullet points to get you through writer's block? Yeah, sure. Maybe, you know, just like you probably use the internet to help you, you, you know, you, you Google something that, that helps you get through writer's block. It's no different. Um, so it's okay to be skeptical. Uh, it's okay not to want to fully embrace everything, but don't miss out on the ways that God might surprise you because he always is using tools that man makes for his own purposes. So don't, yeah. don't miss what God wants to do. Um, don't let your skepticism kind of prevent you from from that um and that's not that's not again not a full-throated in, in endorsement for all things new and uh ai uh, we were talking uh, we'll wrap up this way uh we were talking about vr virtual reality stuff and um i know there's some virtual reality churches and i'm not against any of that i'm i'm, I'm glad that there's people out there i'm not that guy i'm never going to be the one out there being the missionary in the metaverse i don't think at least as I sit here in 2023, I don't think that's going to be me. Um, who knows? Maybe I'll be a latecomer on that. But I've heard of like virtual reality baptisms and things like that. And I'm, you know, and I go, that's not a baptism then. Um, can someone preach the gospel in virtual reality? Can someone accept the gospel through a conversation in in the metaverse? Absolutely. Can I baptize someone in, in the metaverse? I I don't, I don't think so. That's, that's a bridge I'm not willing to cross. Right. So seems we, impossible. It doesn't contain the elements that right? a baptism would have. Even if you so. were, even if you're a sprinkler, there's no, there's no, not even any sprinkling going on. So, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, again, so embracing some things and what God wants to do doesn't mean it has to be full throated support for everything and every use all the time, obviously. Yeah. I think yeah 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 i i think that's a good a good summary um all right well hey you know bit of a longer like, episode i think i have no idea how, how long this is but I, I hope this is helpful and maybe this is the first time you've been thinking about ai you know, or yeah. certainly ai in the church yeah you can go go play with it you know i mean i think for us right now it's uh for entertainment purposes only i um, mean we've certainly gotten some laughs out of what chat gpt is has a output depending on what you ask it to do. So you can go play around with that and get a, get a kick. If you, um, if you think that might be fun, uh, but take it seriously at some point, it's going to be at least the technology behind it. Right. Is going to have, is it's going to change your life. I feel very certain of that. It'll at least be probably more integrated than you have expected it to be. Um, yep. All right, well, this is episode 176 of the Church Revitalization Podcast, so you can go to malfirstgroup.com slash 176 and read an amazing sermon on Ephesians 4 <laughs> along with the rest of <laughs> what we said. It's a sermon. <laughs> it, it is a sermon. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, you, hopefully you find our actual human commentary better than what the computer created today. So if, if, if that's the case, then that was a win. Uh, but thanks for being with us. Um, and uh, the video version of this is over on YouTube. 
Um, if that's where you started, there's a link in the description below to get back over to the show notes. Hey, thanks for being with us. We'll see you next week. Mm-hmm.